Hello and welcome some of the world's smartest engineers and technology professionals are sitting in India and doing work and doing, sorry, let me do that. <coughs> Hello and welcome some of the world's smartest engineers and technology professionals sit in India, maybe in cities like Bangalore and actually help global corporations understand customers better, access customers better using cutting edge technologies. This is being done in global captive centers in many cases, but also in many cases being done by small enterprises who are working on everything from machine learning to the most recent robotic process innovation, automation. So how is this being done? So let's talk to someone who has been instrumental in bringing many of these uh, corporations to India and helping exploit that, uh, that sheer pool of skills that we have here and using it to deliver and over time create the skills and the, and the, and the base with which India is obviously now better positioned to take on the future. Joining me to, uh, to discuss this is Lalit Ahuja, founder of ANSR uh, Consulting, a company mm -hmm. that's brought more than 33, 36 uh, such global capital mm -hmm. centers to India and also which has resulted in considerable investment coming into the country and jobs. Mm -hmm. so, so tell us uh, first, uh, what has the transition been like and what has this journey been like so far? So where do we stand today as you look at the landscape of particularly the enterprises that you've brought in? So I guess it's all about future-proofing the enterprises. Uh, you know, from a history perspective, uh, we got started off with our business, with a joint venture opportunity uh, with Target. That was the time the Amazon reality was on the wall and, uh, you know, uh, Target was looking at um, a strategy to transform its DNA and become a technology company. And they realized they couldn't do that in the U.S. And it had several aspects to it. Uh, how does a company like Target transform into a data-driven decision-making company? How does it become an omni-channel retailer, how does it become a technology company, and how does it broadly use technology to uh, drive productivity and efficiencies in its business. Uh, so we came out with this whole concept of establishing literally the second headquarters for the company, a more important building strategic capacity to help the company in its, in its transformation journey. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, the place selected was Bangalore and the approach was interesting, which was to hire, you know, literally rocket scientists that we could find in our marketplace from companies like Google and Microsoft and Intel and Cisco because uh, we had to solve problem that had not come to India before, right? So it was a very different mission of sorts in terms of you know, transforming a company. And, uh, you know, I guess companies like Target realize that there's nothing like change management when you're doing change on the kind of scale it was done uh, in their captive center in India. So build a remote capability and one fine day when it's all up and running, just flip the switch mm. and uh, you're live, right? Mm. So that strategy has worked. And essentially what's going on today is companies uh, literally operating in stealth mode and building these futuristic capabilities that will help them not only from the perspective of being competitive or driving their growth or transformation agenda, but also be more ready uh, for the future. Interestingly, there are a few companies in our portfolio that are now being inspired by what science fiction is all mm. about. So the notion over here is what was science fiction 20 years back is a reality today. And what is science fiction today maybe would be a reality or could be a reality in five years, considering the rate at which technology is being adopted and the rate at which technology is changing the business and enterprises. Well, right? What's a good so example of that from your own vantage point? So uh, I'll give uh, two examples, uh, a major retailer, uh, building, you know, the next generation uh, AI-driven robots. I mean, literally, uh, you know, they look like us and mm. they can engage customers uh, in intelligent conversations. The, the business case being solved over here is how do you help customers find the products in a big box retailer that, you know, the workforce that is not trained very well uh, can find. You know, you go to a large 200,000 square feet retailer, it's almost impossible to help a customer with one of the 
hundred and hundred thousand SKUs that a store carries. And here comes the robos, robo that uh, essentially will know the customer, will engage the customer in a meaningful conversation, use computer vision to recognize the part, to uh, you know instantly scan the inventory in a store, and you know guide the customer to a particular aisle where the product could be located, or maybe help the customer order online uh, and uh, deliver. Uh, so it's it's changing the way retailing is being done by introducing technologies uh, in a form that has never been done before. I mean, think about robotics, think about computer vision, think about IoT, think about AI, everything in one single robo uh, that, uh, you know, all it needs is maybe some, you know, battery mm -hmm. charging mm -hmm. in the middle of the night um, and you don't need any HR. And uh, so this is an, this is scary, right? I mean, we talk about RPA and how jobs could get impacted, but think about, you know, RPA in a robo that uh, also mimics, you know, the human behavior when it comes to, let's say, engagement, and uh, because that has a huge impact on, you know, creating an environment that people are used to. I'll give another example, which is around how do you, you know, uh, help. Um, the International Space Station as an example, mm. uh, in the astronauts working in the International Space Station uh, deal with uh, anything that can break, mm. you know, think gravity and uh, things can always break and you don't have enough backroom space to carry uh, spare parts. Mm. So if you could scan and print a spare part mm. and keep things going because the next mission is not going to be for another 20 months, mm. you know. Uh, so some of these very interesting problems are, are being solved. And finally, uh, another example from a travel and transportation company where all you're trying to do is understand the consumer in every possible way. So, you know, you provide not only a consistent experience in a hotel or in an aircraft, but also to ensure that you're constantly learning how people's behavior may change with the time of the day or day of the week or a specific mode they could be in, right? So again, one a scary dimension to, you know, the intersection of technology and consumer behavior and how it is going to change business forever. I guess uh, the important point is a lot of it is, you know, stealth work. You know, a lot of it will never be spoken about. I mean, there'll be... Mm. Uh, unwritten stories, but more and more we see such work happening out of India. Right. And, and as you look at the, the cumulative experience and understanding that we've gained as, as a country now, in maybe in retail which you've spent time on or many of the other areas that you've advised or helped bring in, where do you see this going and what is the, uh, how critical do you see the workforce and the skills in India becoming to the global ecosystem of, uh, of large enterprises and yeah. their objectives? Yeah, I guess uh, there's several dimensions over here that makes us a very unique powerhouse mm. in some ways. We obviously have the scale. Uh, we have a culture where once you drive people with passion or purpose, it just takes performance to a whole new level altogether. I mean, I recall my days at Target uh, and all you have to do is come out with a war cry of beating the hell out of Walmart, right? Mm. That was good enough for people to take, uh, you know, the mission to, you know, uh, a different level altogether from the perspective of ensuring uh, success. I guess um, the other aspect is in terms of um, the fact that we are in a very concentrated environment where you have so many companies trying to do so much in a very connected community where uh, in as much as people know where to draw the line, there are a lot of there's a lot of learning and sharing that is going on that makes us into a very unique ecosystem. We are one of the largest uh, startup ecosystem mm. in the world. And, uh, you know, there are some inspiring stories that have an impact on the ecosystem constituents mm. uh, in some ways. 
uh, we are a leapfrog country. I mm. mean, look at uh, Flipkart or, uh, you know, uh, companies like Swiggy and how they are solving complex problems. And uh, there are inspirations that the Fortune 500 is taking mm. in terms of how we use 2G networks and 3G networks to transact huge amount of business on mobile phones, mm. right? So I guess uh, the whole notion of being a, a super Silicon Valley in some ways where you have service providers, you have the tech companies, you have uh, Target as a tech company or a Wells Fargo Bank as a tech bank and, uh, and the startup and the leapfrogging and the Jugaad innovation. All coming so together. all coming together yeah. in ways that makes us into a very, very unique ecosystem, mm. right? And that uh, is, I guess in some ways, just the end of the beginning mm. of the possibilities. One of the things that I was talking about was this whole notion of nano or micro GCCs coming in. Mm. Uh, you know, we're looking at uh, companies that are that just need five rocket scientists, mm. right, to do something that will be the next Airbnb or next Google or next, mm. um, you know, Twitter. Mm. Uh, and there's plenty of such ideas being created in different parts of the world. They don't know how to execute on them because you don't have the AI or the blockchain or the IoT talent in scale uh, that exists over here. Right. And, and you're saying these are uh, these sort of four or five rocket scientists would work for a larger company back somewhere. So I guess the workforce preferences are changing. Mm. You know, people are increasingly being driven by the excitement that goes with solving complex problem. Mm. So if you sort out or if you take care of some of the basics, right, and or hygiene, in terms of the work environment, in terms of compensation and benefits, and empower the workforce contextually with not just the most difficult problems of the country, but of the world, which is what is being done in Silicon Valley or places like Austin mm. or the Golden Triangle or the New England area. Uh, the ideas are there. There is no execution capability. And that's the next frontier that's just coming to India, right? And, and this, the impact of this is going to be so profound in terms of the convergence of technology, skills, uh, execution, and problem solving in ways that hasn't been done before, hmm. right? Right, so last question. So uh, what are the one or two things that you're personally the most excited about as you, as you looked at all these opportunities and you can see how the, the, uh, there's a certain confluence of uh, uh, desires and needs uh, and aspirations. So what, what's, what's, keep, what's keeping you excited and what are you looking out for? I guess, uh, you know, just the shift of center of gravity, it's just the empowerment. The, you know, you're no longer an outpost or a back office. Mm. You are the super front office. Mm. You are leading the charge in defining or redefining the future of the world. I mean, this is the true make in India in some ways, right? This opportunity has not existed in the past, right? I guess what has changed, I mean, there was always technology we knew that was coming in. We knew AI is going to become all pervasive. But the opportunity for us to leverage AI and blockchain and our talent and our culture and our passion to be at the driver's seat I guess is the single most exciting opportunity. We've never had that opportunity, but it's here and now. That's a wonderful note to end on. Thank yeah. you very much, very Thank much you for so speaking much. with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.